So, for our students at home, so the first topic to revise um, for this week is um, chemical equilibrium. So, we'll just briefly revise the topic and take some questions from uh, my class question. Um, the most important aspect in um, this topic I would like to talk about is um, the Chaplas principle, which we all know. So, what is the Chaplas principle? The Chaplas principle states that if an external constraint, such as change in temperature, pressure, or concentration, is imposed on a chemical system in equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift so as to annul or neutralize the constraints. From that principle, three things can be what itemized. The first is effect of temperature. The second is pressure. And the third is concentration. Now let us go to explain each of these bit by bit. Now temperature. How does temperature affect a chemical reaction in a paper? Let's use a very simple example. Let's take an element A plus B reacting to give you C plus D. And the element is endothermic. The reaction is endothermic. Now, whenever a reaction is written like this, the positive sign here indicates that the fourth reaction is endothermic. I repeat, endothermic. While the backward reaction is exothermic. Now, what is the meaning of endothermic? Endothermic reaction is a reaction whereby heat is absorbed from the surrounding. While exothermic reaction is a reaction whereby heat is released to the surrounding. When an endothermic reaction occurs, the environment becomes cold. When exothermic reaction occurs, the environment becomes hot. So for the fourth reaction, take note that the fourth reaction always tally with the sign that is what written here. So that means the fourth reaction is endothermic, which I always tell my students to designate as D, meaning decrease in temperature. While the backward reaction is exothermic, which I will tag as I, meaning increase in temperature. So, why do we need to tag this? You agree with me after this. If I want to know the effect of increase in temperature and pressure, let's say for instance now, a question asks you, what is the effect of increase in temperature on this system? So, if the temperature is increased, according to the Chaclas principle, the equilibrium will shift so as to neutralize the constraints. So that means the system will afterwards decrease the temperature in order to bring it to its what? To its former status. So if temperature is increased, the system will decrease the temperature. Hence, that will favor the reaction that involves decrease in temperature, which is the forward reaction. So for, for such a question, the forward reaction will be favored. Let's go over that again, in case it's confusing. If you are giving this system, or this example, the sign that is always on this side goes along with the forward reaction. For instance now, this is positive. That shows that the reaction is um, endothermic. So that means the forward reaction is endothermic. Endothermic reaction leads to decrease in temperature. One exothermic reaction, which is the reverse reaction, leads to increase in temperature. So if you, if you ask an exam, what is the effect of increase in temperature on this system? What do we do? Since the temperature of the system has got increased, the system will decrease the temperature, since it's in a state of equilibrium, to decrease the temperature to return back to its original water status. In trying to decrease the temperature, it will then favor the re a reaction that involves decrease in temperature, which is the forward reaction. That's the reason for putting this D and I, so that the student will quickly spot out the reaction that is what favored. So our answer is the forward reaction is what favored. In our exam, as we are going to study very soon, the options, uh, the right option might not be what I just said. The examiner can put it in different form. So if he, the student does not see it will figure the forward reaction. The same as C, it will increase the concentration or the yield of C or D or both of them. 
So the answer might be increase in the yield of D, increase in the yield of D, increase in the concentration of C, increase in the concentration of what? D, or decrease in the yield of A, decrease in the yield of B, decrease in the concentration of A, decrease in the concentration of what? B. Because you agree with me, if the fourth reaction is favored, C and D are produced more, Why? A and B are produced in lesser quantity. So, in continuation, um, the next one is pressure. How does pressure have an effect on reactions in equilibrium? For pressure, it's very simple deduction of what we make. We calculate the total number of moles on the right hand side and that on the what? left hand side. Um, according to this reaction, the total number of moles on my left is 3, 2 plus 1, while that on my right is 2. So the forward reaction leads to a decrease in volume. The forward reaction leads to a decrease in volume, so that is why I'm going to put D here. While the backward reaction, we agree with it, is from 2 to 3, which leads to increase. You put what? I here. So, with this, we are good to go. But let me say this. We should take note that pressure only has effects on gases. So if any of the reactants or products is not in gaseous form, pressure will not have an effect on it. Meaning, for example, if oxygen or whatever that is here is solid or liquid, I will not add the one to this two. That means the total on this left hand side is going to be two. If it were liquid or solid. So pressure does not have effects on any other um, states except what gas. Secondly, pressure only has effects if the total number of moles on the reactant side is different from the total number of moles on the product side. So if the number of moles are the same, pressure will not have an effect. So let's look at this uh, question back again now. So if a question asks us, what is the effect of increasing the pressure in this reaction? What is the effect of increasing the pressure of this reaction? Very simple. As we all know, the particular principle has told us the equilibrium we shift to us to now change or neutralize it. So in neutralizing it, the system will bring down the pressure. So in bringing down the pressure, to favor the one that involves decrease. To decrease, the system will decrease the pressure, so the favored one that involves what? Decrease. Hence, the forward reaction will be favored. The forward reaction will be favored. As I've said in the earlier one, the forward reaction is favored, can also be interpreted as increase in the yield of um, SO3, or decrease in the yield of oxygen, or decrease in the yield of SO2. I forgot to also say that forward reaction being favored could also be interpreted as the equilibrium is shifted to the right. The equilibrium is shifted to the what? To the right. So, also, if the pressure is decreased, if you are asked the question, if the pressure is what? Decreased. What will happen to the system? Very simple. If the pressure is decreased, the Chatelard principle will, will take its due course. That means the system will what? Increase the pressure. And in increasing the pressure, it's a favor the one that involves increase. Which one involves increase? The backward reaction. So the answer is the backward reaction will be what? Favor. Meaning, yes. I can hear some people getting it. Meaning that the yield of SO3 will decrease while the yield of oxygen and SO2 will increase. So our first level example we are going to be taking from Y class question is um, this question, which can be found in um, year 2018, number 12. The question goes thus, um, 2 moles of AB2 plus 1 mole of um, B2, reversible reaction to give you 2 moles of AB3. The question says, the backward reaction will be favored by the backward reaction will be favored by now how do we get our answer if we observe very well the reaction is an exothermic reaction 
I remember we said that whatever we see here goes along with only the forward reaction. Meaning, for the forward reaction, the forward reaction is exothermic. And exothermic is designated by what? I. While the backward reaction is endothermic, which is what? D. So, going through the question generally, what we favor a backward reaction, which leads to decrease in temperature, will be something that is opposite to it. So the backward reaction can only be favored by an increase in temperature. By an increase in temperature. So let's see whether it is in our option. Increase in temperature? No. Increase in temperature is not in our option. So, as we're saying, so the what can favor the backward reaction is for it to increase the temperature. An increase in temperature is not in the option. So, let's go to pressure. For pressure, for pressure, for pressure, the forward reaction. This is 2 plus 1, this is 3, and this is what? 2. So the forward leads to um, decrease, while the backward leads to increase. The forward leads to decrease, you can even write it here, while this one leads to what? Increase. So what we favor the backward reaction for pressure is for me to decrease the pressure. Decrease in temp pressure will what? Favor the backward reaction. It's a very simple analysis because the backward reaction um, is an exothermic. Sorry, this is pressure. The backward reaction involves increase. The backward reaction involves what? Increase. So, what does that uh, mean? So, for me to favor that backward reaction, I have to do something opposite to it, following the Taylor's principle. We have to decrease the pressure because by the time we decrease the pressure, the system will not be what forced to what to increase the pressure, thereby favoring the backward reaction. Hence, our answer is A. Very simple.